Welcome back to Leon Plays Lowrider Tech Channel on YouTube. Uh, it's been a while. I think it's been about nine months since we did a video. It's about time we got back to it. Um, just want to say thank you before we start to anybody who subscribes to the channel, people who comment, like, and share the videos. Um, it really means a lot. Um, but moving on to today's video, we're going to talk about wire wheels. We're going to try and explain a little bit because although a lot of you guys out there know exactly what you do with a set of wire wheels and this will be like just second nature to a lot of you. I've found that we get a lot of questions from people who don't tend to use wire wheels or never use them and they don't understand how um, the, some parts are interchangeable or the different styles of wheels and the different types of offsets and stuff. So to try and help those people and maybe, I don't know, we might not, we might give you some information that you don't know about or you might think we're wrong and you might want to tell us and that's that's perfectly fine um, so getting right into it um, there's basically two types of wire wheels you've got uh, the bolt-on style and then you've got the knock-on style um, the bolt-ons first of all um, are quite popular in the 90s synonymous with um, the typical uh, Euro style uh, low riders uh, you don't get to see a lot of them nowadays um, on the whole, I haven't really seen that many for sale. These came up second hand. Um, if you can find them and snap them, and snap them up, great. But they do suffer from maintenance issues. A lot of them are Chinese made. The chrome's not very good. Uh, and as a result, they corrode quite badly. But as you can see, they are a bolt on wheel. So the hub central part where the spokes uh, meet is a, just a flat plate bolt on. Uh, you can get these in multiple um, fitment five stud or four stud, these are four stud, the multi stud as well, so you stand at four by 100, four by uh, 4.5 and 4.25. Um, the knockoff part, uh, which is this front piece, is, is just a removable piece of kit. It's just, it's not anything to do with the fit, it's, it's just for looks more than anything. So if you uh, undo that brush through, uh, that just pops off and you can see in the front there's your fitment um, there's not really a lot much else to say about that you can get them in different sizes these are 14 inch standard laced um, you can get them in 13s all the way up um, reverse standard front lace we'll give you some details in a minute of the different type of offset but this is a standard lace as you can see it's got a bit of a lip whereas these have got quite a large lip so that's a 14 by 6 I think, yeah 14 by 6, standard piece, bolt on, wire on. So moving on to the knock on wire wheels. So the main difference is that these are essentially a three piece wheel. Um, to get these to fit, you start with a knock on, uh, sorry an adapter, whoops, you start with an adapter these are uh, five stud, I think these are European fit, so these are five by 100, uh, 4.25 and 115. So they'll fit most European um, uh, or Jap cars that aren't a four stud. Um, these are probably the only bit that you would need to change when it comes to fitting to a car, depending on what offset you want. But essentially, if you've got the wheel and the knockoff, the adapter can be suited to fit the car. So as long as these fit your wheel, this part will go on pretty much anything. So for example, that's a five, that's a five stud adapter. It's got exactly the same teeth in the back, that's mounted. And then the knockoff on the front will tighten it up. I'll just show you. Whereas this is a four stud adapter. So uh, there's four by 100, it's exactly the same as that. It's the same fit. So once you've got the right adapters for a knock-on or knock-off wheel, as long as the wheels fit, depending on the offset, the rest of it doesn't matter. So you've got that fitted. If you've got a set of wheels and you want to take them off a four stud and put them on a five stud, but you're happy with the offset and you're happy with the knock-off, you could just buy a different set of adapters, fit them to whatever car that you want so you can buy these pretty cheap on ebay they come from american ebay i think you can get them 
uh, for about 120, 130 pound plus shipping and taxes. I think it probably works out about 150 quid, which isn't too bad. Um, once you've got, so that obviously bolts to your brakes, the same as that bolts to your um, to your hub. That will then slide your wheel on, and then depending, make sure that you've got the right uh, knockoff because they are sided. It's the wrong one. So there you go. Then it's just a case of tightening it up. Boom. There you go. So yeah. The R side is, you find that the white type is for the left and the red type is for the right. And that, and the, I think it's the, the adapters on the right have got a, a reverse thread and that's to stop the wheel from coming loose as you're driving. So it's important to ensure that you've got the right adapter on the right hand side of the car. So red for right white for left. They should be marked if you have a look. Uh, maybe not, but the adapters will be. I don't know if you can see. Just there it says left and on this one it says right. Okay so now we'll talk a little bit about um, the offset. So like I was saying this is a standard lace wheel. As you can see the wheel is laced fairly central to the wheel. Um, this is a good fit for most Japanese cars, older Fords, sort of European Japanese rear wheel drive cars um, and maybe some front wheel drive cars but you tend to find that these deep reverse wheels will uh, only really fit or only suitable to uh, rear wheel drive American uh, cars that can, they can fit them under the arches. I mean if you want to, if you're a stance freak, if you like the idea of a deep dish wheel on a front wheel drive car and you can get the tuck, you can get the camber and do it. We originally fitted a set of 7x13 reverse Y wheels to the Honda but the fitment was awful. It was scary to drive. So we ended up going with a 7x13, it's the same wheel, it's the same adapter, the same knockoff but it's laced differently so they're um, standard lace rather than reverse lace. The alternative to these two is front lace wire wheels and front laced the, the lace under the wheel is right up against the front lip so it's designed for a front wheel drive car so you're more modern European Jap anything that the wheel will fit underneath the arches uh, the most suitable for um, I don't know if you can see it on the board here but I've tried to I've tried to explain it you've got your front lace wire wheels that's your hub there's your spokes and that's your adapter so as you can see your hub bolts right up against the front side a bit like a front wheel drive car your standard lace is more central uh, so sometimes you might not be able to get the right fit the wheels won't tuck you could use a standard lace or if you're lucky enough to fit reverse which in my opinion is the best looking of the, of the three and reverse wire wheels uh, are sp spokes are, are laced right at the back of the wheel to give you that extra dish um, you can get 13s all the way up to some crazy sizes. In the States they run 20s and 22s. We're not going to get into that, but depending on what you want, what you want the most common sizes are 13s and 14s, 13 by 7, 14 by 7. Um, on some of the uh, impalas on the rear to get to clear the, the arches, they run a uh, 30 by 5.5. Um, but you can also get, if you prefer bigger wheels, 15, 16, 17s all the way up. Um, I'm pretty certain that you can get them laced um, to your requirements. So if you were crazy and you wanted to go for a 22 inch reverse laced 8 inch wide wire wheel, they are available. They're a lot more expensive, um, but they are available. Um, we tend to buy our wire wheels from a company called uh, Weber Works in Germany, also known as Showtime Hydraulics. You can pick up a set of 13 by 7 inch wire wheels like these with the adapters specific to your needs. If you tell them that you want four stud, they'll supply four stud. If you want five stud, they'll supply five. You let them know what fitment you need. Uh, and normally a choice of adapters, uh, sorry, knockoffs. You can get two aired, that bar type style, you can get bullets, you can get gold, 
you can get all sorts of stuff again these are things that are normally available on USA eBay. They're not too expensive. It'll take a while to get here, but once you've paid um, your shipping and uh, your duty and taxes and all that kind of stuff, which is all built in, although it takes a while to get through the postal system, they don't work out too expensive. In fact, um, it's probably cheaper to buy off USA eBay than it is to try and find second-hand stuff. Um, although you won't really be able to buy full sets of wheels because they're too heavy. Um, don't tend to ship them um, and they'll cost you a fortune. There's multiple different manufacturers. Most of the wheels are Chinese made. They're relatively cheap. They're a lot cheaper if you can buy them in the States. If you can go to America and pick them up and put them in your luggage or something along those lines, you'll probably save a lot of money. Um, they will rust in UK weather. If you put a set of cheap Chinese wire wheels on, your, on a UK car, drive them throughout the winter by the end of the winter the road salt and the moisture will obliterate them uh, these were extremely rusty when we picked these up i'm um, just going through the process of trying to clean them up as best i can and paint the spokes they'll never be perfect but for a second set for the honda i think they'll be good um, there is more expensive sets usa made triple uh, plate uh, tri triple chrome plate uh, with stainless steel spokes um, Dayton's are probably the most well known, you've probably heard of them um, and you can still buy them from the States um, uh, handmade to your specifications but they will cost you thousands so if you've got the money then great, go out and spend the money but in the short term if you're just trying to get yourself a lowrider built and um, you haven't got the budget, you really want to go with the look obviously wire wheels aren't specific to a lowrider, you don't have to run wire wheels, don't get uh, don't get into the trap of if it hasn't got wire wheels it isn't a low rider a lot of people will say that but although um, they're synonymous with low riders wire wheels aren't key to building a low rider it's down to personal preference um, you run what, what you want but if you need any help purchasing wire wheels or if you're looking for a set you can always drop us a message um, you can speak to us on our Instagram page our Facebook page, which is UK Lowriding, or mess or drop a, a comment on the YouTube channel. Um, we'll always help out where we can. Um, we're all constantly on the lookout. I'm always on Facebook Marketplace, eBay. They do come up second hand. These came up second hand, um, and I snapped them up because I've never owned a set of bolt on wire wheels. And although they need a lot of work, it's just I just wanted a set. Um, so I went out and picked them up. Um, and moving on to fitment, there is two main ways of fitting. Obviously the original, most well-known way, and what how wire wheels tend to be fitted, is with a lead hammer. So sometimes when you buy a set, sometimes when you buy a set of wire wheels, they will come with um, a lead a lead hammer for fitment. Basically, you, you get that as tight as you can by hand, and then you bash that with a lead hammer. Um, they don't tend to last very long. If you've got painted wheels, they'll scratch the hell out of them. Um, so there is alternatives. If you run these bullet type um, knockoffs, you tend to come with a multi-sided tool, uh, which fits to the outside a bit like a great big spanner, which you can hit with uh, a lump hammer or any type of hammer to get tight. Um, but if you don't want to use um, a lead hammer on your brand new 2 a uh, Zenith knockoffs. Um, Limit um, Fabrications make this tool, which we featured if you look through our videos. We did a little tech sequence. Matt Loxton did a little video of him using this with a, uh, an impact driver. I've used these myself with just a breaker bar. I found it to be extremely good at tightening these up. I, oh, I, I must admit, I doubted, doubted them, I thought you'll never get them tight enough, but having tried, having put that on the wheel and then wrenched it, I found that I've been able to get this tighter than using a lead hammer. Um, so um, if you were thinking about getting one of these, then obviously you need to use them on, on bolt-on wire wheels, but if you think about getting one of these, drop us a message or go and find uh, Limit Fabrications on uh, Instagram and he'll, uh, he'll sort you out. Um, if you've got any questions on anything we've said today or if there's something that we've said which is nonsense or you've missed something or you think you can help with information put it in a message 
we're happy to correct ourselves. We don't claim to know everything about lowriders, but there's, especially in the UK, that there seems to be a hole uh, that we've tried to fill where information is a bit thin on the ground. Um, there isn't a lot of suppliers, well, there isn't any suppliers in the UK. There is suppliers of hydraulics and wire wheels in Europe. There's a few places, a few reputable places that we can recommend for installation in the UK. But essentially, if you want to do all this stuff yourself, a lot of people um, have to go out and find, get the research, speak to people, get as much information as you can. Don't rely on one source, don't rely on us by any means. There's loads of different places you can go, loads of people you can speak to a lot. And ask all the questions before you commit to buying a set of wheels that might not fit, or you might find that you want a set of these, but because of the style of the car that you're running, you need to run a bolt on wire wheel, so then you gotta go dig in. Uh, part of the fun is trying to find something. A lot of the stuff isn't available, it's rare, it's hard to find, but when you do find it, you pick it up, you might be able to pick it up cheap, and then it's onto an assembly making your own low rider. Speak to us, we'll help however we can. Also, we've got to plug the uh, the merch. Um, we're still selling merchandise, we're still selling uh, Lay and Play logo tees. We've got a finite amount of it was 65 Impala tees, only a small and medium left. We've got a few stickers. Uh, we're in the process of getting hats made. Uh, I hope you like them, let us know what you think. But uh, the newest bit of merch is this uh, Lay and Play wire wheel tee that was designed by a good friend of ours, Cy uh, Porter from um, Brand King. He's uh, relatively new to the UK lowrider scene, but he is lowrider through and through. He's 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 going to be big on the scene next season. He's putting up um, Boulevard's finest uh, lowrider car club in the UK. We're excited to see what them boys do. Um, but yeah, get in contact, speak to us. These are currently on the website. Uh, if you go to layandplay.co.uk. Um, you'll find the logo tees and a few other bits. But if you want one of these badass new tees, message us on Instagram or on UK Low Riding and we'll get back to you and tell you how we get on with shipping, etc. But that's it for today. I hope you liked today's video. Um, I hope I wasn't too fast to flow through the information. If there's anything that you need to know, drop us a line and that's it. Peace out.